the humanitarian crisis in Syria and in the neighboring nations. The United Nations says Syria is now, in its words, hemorrhaging people. Women, children, men, more than two million have fled the fighting and they are escaping into neighboring countries. Two of those, two million so far into neighboring countries. One of those, Jordan, where more than 500,000 refugees have now located. In that country, in Amman with us this morning is Peter Kessler, who's the regional spokesperson for the UN High Commission for Refugees. Mr. Kessler, good morning. Good morning. Jordan has taken in, sir, the second largest number of refugees after Lebanon. I mentioned how uh, the UN High Commissioner has characterized this as really one of the great tragedies or the great tragedy of this century. You have seen these refugees up close. What are you seeing as far as what they are dealing with? What have you witnessed uh, with these people who have fled to Jordan? Well, we're certainly seeing a, a sense of extreme abandonment, of insecurity. Um, we have a million children, who, many of whom are not in school, and they're not sure when they're going to be able to return to school. The war is now in its third year. We have a refugee camp uh, the size of a small city here in Jordan with 120,000 people. Just in recent weeks, we've seen 50,000 people fleeing into Iraq, despite the ongoing insecurity in that own country. So clearly there is a lot of fear about the future, a lot of uncertitude about the present, and of course concern that the, the war may continue and even intensify. And in the UN community, UNHCR, we're, we're concerned because our donors have only met but 40% of our, of our needs. And so we feel that uh, with 60% of our budget still unfulfilled, we're in a very precarious situation if the war should intensify. So a, a difficult situation financially to continue to help these people, but with the money you have, what kinds of services and support are you offering the refugees there in Jordan? Well, in Jordan and across the region, we're pro providing, of course, various forms of assistance. Uh, we're also building new camps to have camps on standby should there be a further large exodus. But indeed, refugees get items like blankets, uh, tents, or, or containerized shelter. Um, People who are vulnerable can qualify for special ATM bank cards where they can get a monthly subsistence allowance. Um, other people are getting complimentary food aid. Um, children are going to school that's funded by the UN. Um, we have, of course, other assistance going, uh, 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 other assistance available like, like water in the camps, uh, sanitation, obviously, and of course, all the other basic needs are being provided in the camps alongside other more subtle needs that are being addressed like psychological support, um, other community services because we have so many vulnerable women, so many traumatized children. But what we fear is that the number of people approaching camps could increase as those persons living outside the camps become more uh, destitute, run out of money, and then have to report to the camps. So a dire situation, as you say, even for the most basic of needs. I want to come back to one of the points you made, and that is education. Some of the money is helping some of the children go to school. But we know that the vast majority of these children uh, are not able to receive any education at this time and have not for more than two years now. So this is a, many people talking about a lost generation in terms of education. Can you speak more to the long-term toll this crisis might take in that regard? Well, clearly, as you say, it's a lost generation, one million children, the size of a, of a, of a large North American city. Um, it's, it's a vast number of kids who, who aren't in school or not enough of them are in school. Uh, we have children who are being uh, forced uh, by their families to go out and, and do small jobs, to, uh, to uh, carry items in wheelbarrows to and from markets, to sell chewing gum or other candy. Um, we have young children uh, uh, barely into adolescence who, who are being forced into early marriage. Um, so we have problems like forced marriage, early marriage. We have childhoods being lost across the region because the war is enduring and because 
people do not have all the aid they require, and the host community in countries like Jordan and Lebanon is becoming more concerned about the vast weight of this population, well, me, which let, is why we, UNHCR we, is in go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say let's talk about that a little bit more because one of the things on which the report is very clear today, it, it, the words of the report is the neighboring countries like Jordan could be brought to the point of collapse. What kind of a strain is the refugee crisis having on Jordan and its own resources? Well, Jordan is a very poor country. Um, it, it has very few natural resources, um, and it already has, of course, like the other states, like Lebanon and, and uh, other neighboring states, many millions of Palestinian refugees. Um, Jordan is also very short on water. Um, it, its health care system is, is growing, but still doesn't meet the full needs of its own population. So what UNHCR is asking donors and private individuals is to help fund our programs in areas like building up health centers, like providing water supplies, sanitation, um, even garbage bins. You know, everything has to be planned for this new population, and we're also having to encourage the governments to think beyond tents and beyond containerized housing into turning refugee camps into real communities, real housing estates, because this idea of people living in tents for another winter, and we do have snow in this region, is very, very difficult for the population. So we have to think long term now. Mr. Kessler, I thank you very much for that depiction of what's going on there at the camps Thanks in Jordan. Much.